GLS, you can resume the clock on your mark. GLS copies. Countdown clock will resume on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. GLS mainline has been initiated. Okay. T minus 10 minutes and counting. We are T minus 10 minutes away from liftoff of Artemis 1. As you can see, the clock is now moving. Let's put that up. T minus 9 minutes and 47 seconds. The L minus 15 pole complete. Uh, show 06, 47, 44 is a new liftoff time. Affirm. Okay. O one forty seven forty four one forty seven a.m. Eastern Time and forty four seconds. We went straight into terminal count. Lift off now nine minutes away. So terminal count. Control has been given over to the GLS, the ground launch sequencer, a computer and software that is doing all of the commanding and monitoring of the space launch system. We'll hear call outs from the GLS operator, Alex Pandalos. as well as NASA test director Jeff Spaulding. GLS is pre-tensioning the umbilicals at this very moment. You can see them as they run down the rocket. That's getting them ready to detach. At liftoff, those arms will swing away, will let go of the rocket in a clockwise direction. T minus eight minutes and counting. The GLS is uh, performing up to 100 commands per second, inclu including configuring ground systems for power transfer to the rocket. GLS is turning on cameras, recording video inside and outside the crew module to collect data for engineers. Purging the aft skirt booster with high flow nitrogen. Clear out any hydrogen gas that may be there. You can see the crew access arm is already retracted. When there is crew during Artemis II, it would happen at T minus six minutes. But out of abundance of caution, they went ahead and retracted the arm well ahead of liftoff. Want to point your attention to the base of the mobile launcher. Something wasn't done to reduce the power from the pressure caused by the rocket's ignition and thunderous sound. It could damage the rocket. So the ignition over pressure and sound suppression system will flood the mobile launcher with water. You'll see that sequence start at T minus 17 seconds. Now coming up in less than 30 seconds, the ground launch sequencer will start bringing the high energy systems online, starting with core stage pressurization. Fire room one is completely silent as they listen for the next call. GLS is go for core stage tank pressurization. The core stage tank is now pressuring, pressurizing to flight levels. The replenish valve to the liquid hydrogen tank now closing. The liquid oxygen tank will come a little later. Now we're arming your, the Orion ascent pyros and transfer to internal power. The launch abort system, or LAS jettison motor, is now armed. On this flight, the abort motor is inactive because there is no crew on board. Up next is the flight termination system, or FTS, which gives the Space Force 
the ability to destruct the rocket if it goes in the wrong direction. Let's listen in for that. GLS is go for FTS arm. The flight termination system is now armed. Coming up at four minutes and 40 seconds, a big moment. This is where the RS-25 engines and their bleed go to high flow. It's been a little tricky to dial in. GLS is go for LH-2 high flow bleed check. Good word, we've passed that. The cryo team got the LH-2 engine bleed pressure loop dialed in. They are now at the right temperature for launch. Countdown continues. T minus four minutes, 15 seconds. Up next, GLS fires up the KPUs. Those are high speed turbines which provide pressure to hydraulic pumps that steer the RS-25s. Stands for core stage auxiliary power unit start. GLS is go for core stage APU start. That now leads to the thrust vector control test at T minus two minutes and 30 seconds. That can proceed now, and we will see the engine's gimbal at the bottom of the core stage. At T minus three minutes and 10 seconds, you will hear the go for purge sequence four. That's a helium purge of the four core stage engines downstream of the propellant valve, getting the air and moisture out. GLS is go for purge sequence four. And in just a few seconds, GLS will close the core stage LOX vent, liquid oxygen. The white vapor cloud caused from the super cold gaseous oxygen condensing the water in the atmosphere will disappear. You see it coming out there now. And there it goes, it's closed. Locks vent closed, pressure rising in the core stage locks tank to flight levels. Coming up in 15 seconds, look for that thrust vector control actuator test. Engines will gimbal. And there they go. The four core stage RS-25 engines gimbling around, testing the ability to steer the rocket into space. They will operate at 109% performance, each RS-25 throwing down a half million pounds of thrust, all four, two million pounds, all together with the boosters, 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust. GLS is good for upper stage to internal power. Now the upper stage has gone to internal power. So power is removed from the rocket's upper stage, the ICPS, and it's been switched to battery power. The same milestone is coming up for the core stage at T minus one minute and 30 seconds. GLS is go for core stage to internal power. The rocket's core stage, which houses the three flight computers, is now on battery power. So there is no more hold time available because there's no more margin on the battery. So if we hold, have a hold, we'd have to recycle back to T minus 10 minutes and recharge those batteries. The count continues. A note now, shortly after liftoff. One minute. Shortly after liftoff, Mission Control Houston will take control of the rocket, and my colleague, Leah Cheshire, will take over commentary. T minus 50 seconds and counting. Coming up at T minus 33 seconds, the GLS will hand off control to the ALS. This is the autonomous launch sequencer. On board the rocket, it will take over command and control of the rocket. But the ALS will check, make sure there's no holds coming from the ground up until T minus GLS two seconds. GLS is go for ALS. And we are go for ALS. The Space Launch System is now counting down to liftoff of Orion on its maiden voyage to the moon. Launch team can no longer recycle the count. Sound suppressor water now flowing 15. under the ML. And here we go. 10, 
Hydrogen burnoff igniters initiate. Seven, six, five, four stage engine start. Three, two, one, boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis One. We rise together back to the moon and beyond. All four RS-25 engines on the core stage and two solid rocket boosters now propelling the vehicle at 128 miles per hour. Hearing good, con good control on the roll from teams in Mission Control Houston. All good calls so far. Now 30 seconds into the flight of Artemis 1. First milestone will be for the vehicle to pass through max Q at about 1 minute and 9 seconds into launch. This is the greatest period of atmospheric force on the rocket. now traveling 607 miles per hour. You're looking at 8.8 .8 million pounds of maximum thrust. Quiet here in the loops in mission control. Four core stage engines are throttling down ahead of passing through max Q. traveling at 1,420 miles per hour. The four core stage engines are back at maximum thrust. The next major milestone will be for the solid rocket boosters to cut off and jettison at about two minutes and 11 seconds into the flight, so about 30 seconds from now. Again, quiet here in Mission Control Houston as teams continue monitoring the flight of Artemis 1. We're now 16 miles downrange from the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center, traveling over 2,800 miles per hour. Standing by for solid rocket booster jettison and shortly thereafter. Confirmation that the solid rocket boosters have separated these 177 foot boosters. Now the core stage continues to power the flight of Orion, all four RS 25 engines firing, traveling over 3,400 miles per hour, 46 miles downrange. Two minutes and 36 seconds into the flight. Hearing nominal calls here in Mission Control Houston. We've still got four good engines on the core stage. Next up, we'll be looking for the service module fairing to separate. This is three 15 by 15 foot fairing panels, providing structural support, protecting the service module. Those will separate at about three minutes and 11 seconds into flight, and very shortly thereafter will be followed by the launch abort system separation. Just over three minutes into the flight of Artemis 1, now traveling over 4,060 miles per hour, 83 miles downrange. We just had confirmation that the...